Welcome everybody back to Father Ted Talks and today I wanted to tell you a story about something that I call the silent sacrament. Now what do I mean by that, the silent sacrament? Well, I had a really beautiful experience a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I did a baptism for um, a couple of friends that I, that I knew. Uh, I was baptizing their first child and I was really taken aback by how beautiful the sacrament was because the service itself was silent. And what do I mean by that? It was silent from many different points of view. First of all, the church was pretty full, had a lot of people there, but nobody was talking. Nobody was, was uh, speaking very loudly or gossiping or, you know, making a big uproar as many times we priests have to deal with both in baptisms and in weddings. People were very prayerful when they came into the church. They venerated the icons, they sat down, they waited patiently for the beginning of the sacrament, and they understood that they were in a house of God, in a temple, in the, in the place of worship. And so they understood that this was not a place for idle talk, this was a place for prayer, and especially because they were there to pray for the baby that was being baptized. And so it was quiet, it was uncanny how, how quiet it was. So we started the service, and again, people were very quiet, and then we came, uh, we came up here to the, to the baptismal, um, you know, chapel that we have here. And we continued with the sacrament. And again, people were very respectful. We did the baptism. We baptized the child. And then at the very, very end, uh, I didn't have to give a sermon. You know, and this is the second part of this idea of the silent sacrament. That, you know, a lot of times at the end of sacraments, we the priests are, um, are usually accustomed to giving uh, a small sermon, uh, but more it turns out to be these days uh, kind of, uh, you know, guidelines on what to do with the child, you know, reminders to the family that they should, you know, bring the child to church to receive communion at least three times after the baptism, to bring them forever, to, to come on a frequent basis, to remind the godparents what their obligations are, uh, to remind the parents what their obligations are. A lot of times the sermon at the end of a baptism service or even the sermons at the end of wedding services uh, have to do with almost a basic reminding of our Orthodox Christians of what their obligations are in raising a child in the Orthodox faith. In this particular situation, it was such a beautiful experience because I didn't need to say any of those things because the couple that I was, uh, I was baptizing, their child, uh, were churchgoers. They are churchgoers that come to church every Sunday. They, you know, they understand that participation in the liturgy and in participation in the sacramental life of the church is something that is not optional, but rather it is the center of their lives. And so they already knew all these things. They already knew what baptism meant. They already knew uh, how appropriate it is to bring your child to church and that you wouldn't think of doing anything else on a Sunday except bringing your child so they can receive the body and blood of Christ, their spiritual nourishment, and that they too as parents are obligated also to prepare themselves and to model that beautiful behavior to the child by receiving communion themselves. I didn't have to speak to the godparent because the godparent was also a person uh, who comes to the church, uh, who actually knew the creed off by heart, who actually knew our father off by heart, who actually understood uh, their role as being the secondary parent, being the number one orthodox role model besides the parents to the child. So all these things I didn't have to say which was a relief for me. I, it, that's why I call it the silent sacrament, that I was able to, you know, have a prayerful service with these beautiful people in the church uh, who respected the church, who understood why they were there, who respected the sacrament, and also I didn't have to remind them because I trusted them and I understood, and they understood what was expected of them. And so at the end, I simply congratulated them I, I wish them that the, the child will grow to be strong and be a good Christian. And that was the end of it. And there was no other expectation because everything went unsaid, because everything was just understood. And the reason why I bring this up today is that this is something that is very rare within our modern Orthodox Church. Unfortunately, I think that it should be the norm. It should be the norm that our people who are baptizing their children or who are coming to be married in the church should know all these things automatically. They should know them from their parents. They should know them from their grandparents. They should know it from listening to sermons in the church. They should know it from reading the Bible and also reading spiritual books. We should know these most basic things about our faith. And when we don't know, then this is when, you know, the sacraments become cultural obligations, they become a spectacle, they become about what the baby will be wearing or what the bride will be wearing, how we're going to decorate the, the baptismal font, um, the colors that we're going to use, the flowers, 
all these kind of external things, these worldly things that have nothing to do with the essence of the sacraments, right? When we don't understand the essence of the sacrament, then of course the event becomes an event and people tend to be loud and talk and, you know, and do a lot of things that are besides the sacrament itself. Uh, and of course, this can become very frustrating for priests. It can become frustrating for those who are here for the appropriate reasons. And of course, this requires a lot of education and requires a renewal of our faith, right? So I believe that the goal should be that we should always be gearing towards the, 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 the so-called silent sacrament. That when we go to church, it should be a given that we know why we're there. We should be well-trained. We should be well-training our children so that when they grow up, they know to teach their children and that we should understand how to do these things and why we are doing these things. This is one of the reasons why we do these videos, to be able to offer um, you know, preparation and to be able to offer education for everybody so that they know going into a sacrament what is expected and also uh, what it means to be an Orthodox Christian in its totality. And so again, the silent sacrament, it is when we don't need to give guidelines, we don't need to explain anything to our people, we don't need to remind them of the most basic things because they already know, because the church itself has taught them. They have grown up in the church and they have been imbued, they have been enculturated, they have been, they have, I guess you could say, absorbed, you know, the ethos, the orthodox ethos, the orthodox mindset of what it is to be an orthodox Christian. And so they just know how to do things, right? And this is uh, my prayer for all of you. This is my prayer for my children. This is my prayer for all the young children that I baptize, that they will be brought up within this beautiful environment where things just make sense because that's all they've known. Of course, when we don't go to church, when we are outside of the environment for a very long period of time, then we feel like a fish out of water. We feel that we don't know what's going on, of course, this, this can be remedied with videos like this, with uh, having a connection with our priest, with asking lots of questions so that we can begin again to reconnect with our community and again to become part of it again, to feel that we are uh, integral members, which of course we are, whether we are have drifted away or whether we have always been uh, deeply connected, we are all members of the bodies of, body of Christ. But again, I do thank that particular uh, couple and that particular family for being such wonderful examples. And of course, other examples and other beautiful families that have shown this beautiful example of how to be reverent and how to be respectful within the church and also how to do our homework so that we are prepared and we take the sacraments seriously. Till next time, I pray that all of us uh, do our diligence and also prepare ourselves properly for these beautiful, beautiful, pivotal life uh, moments, uh, which of course only come around a few times in our lives, the baptism of our children, the marriage of our own marriages or the marriage of our children when they get older, um, so that we don't let these life experiences pass by without understanding their significance, the spiritual significance first, the religious significance, and then of course everything else that is secondary. Till next time, this is Father Ted saying, take care and God bless. Thank you.